Praise the Lord. All right. Tonight, we are going to be talking about something that I'm so excited. How many people, how many people um, understand, you know, I know people talk about, Bishop, you always talk about the spirit and you talk against the law. Tonight, we're going to find out why the law is not good. We're going to find out why the law is not good. But we got to understand where we can go without the law before we understand the damage of the law. Some, somebody say the damage of the law. The damage of the law. Talk to me. If I have any, I know you're going to take your time now, but if I have any questions, you cannot. Oh, no, no, no. This is always open. Okay. Okay. Y'all, listen. Y'all, don't, don't. I'm not the, the only, I'm not the absolute authority on the things of God. God talks to you too, and he might have you to inspire me or incite me to go beyond what I'm teaching. So at any time, feel free to ask questions, okay? Okay, or add to. I, I love that. First, let me tell you, last night I was in heaven. You know, God was talking and asking questions. I missed that. Y'all, 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 y'all feel like, y'all don't feel comfortable with me no more. When I ain't here, y'all just be talking to Pastor Lee, Pastor George. I told y'all y'all ain't talking to me. <laughs> I don't know. So what I did today, I, I made sure I took a lot of tic tacs before I came in. So y'all know that. <laughs> thank God for you. <laughs> we thank, we thank God for you. Um, yeah, please, please, please. I need you to turn your Bible to First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Hey, man of God, you all right? But you, you ain't sitting there. <laughs> Like my mom used to tell me, you didn't sleep with me last night. You didn't sleep with me. Ooh. But I love you, bitch. Ooh, man. I got the mic now, so we can take that. All right. First Corinthians 15, 35 through 58. 23 verses, 35 through 58. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. The Word of God reads, New Living Translation. God bless you, Deacon, Deacon the Sherman. God bless you. Welcome to the study. Um... And I want to welcome my Facebook family. Um, God bless you and welcome to um, the Spirit of Jesus Bible study tonight. But someone, 1 Corinthians 15, and I want Jessica, Jessica, right? You bike? Yeah. You bike for real? Oh, All right. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you, for, thank you for telling your mama, Mama, I really want to go bike over to the church tonight. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, bro. <laughs> bro, I feel it. I feel you. Thank you. Did you tell her you wanted to come? Amen. I'm feeling you. Thank you. All she, I'm going to tell you about your, all she, she needs just a little nudge. She want to come just nudge her a little bit. She, great football, baby. All right. But someone, 1 Corinthians 15, um, 35 through 57. But someone asked, may ask, New Living Translation, how will the dead be raised? What kind of bodies will they have? What a foolish question. When you put a seed in the ground, it doesn't grow into a plant unless it dies first. And what you put in the ground is not the plant that will grow, but only a bare seed of wheat or whatever you are planting. Then God gives it the new body it wants it to have. A different plant grows from each kind of seed. Similarly, there are different kinds of flesh one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are also bodies in the heavens and bodies on the earth. The glory of the heavenly bodies is different from the glory of the earthly bodies. The sun is one kind of glory, while the moon and stars each have another kind. And even the stars differ from each other in their glory. It is the same way with the resurrection of the dead. On earth, our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die. But we will be raised to live forever. Somebody say forever. Forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They are buried as, a, as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. The scripture tells us, the first man, Adam, became a living person, but the last Adam, that is Christ, is a living, giving, life-giving spirit. What comes first is the natural body. When the spiritual body comes, then the spiritual body comes later. Adam, the first man, was made from the dust of the earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven. Earth 
earthly people are like the earthly man, and heavenly people are like the heavenly man. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. What I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. Boy, did he re reveal to me. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who, are, who, who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our bodies, our dying bodies, must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up into in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. And the law gives sin, sin is power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Anybody got any questions or comments pertaining to what was just read? So everybody, everybody know what they're gonna look like when they die. Air. Huh? Air. Going to air? No, you're gonna have a body. You're going to have a body. But a as, body. huh? You're gonna have a body. You are going. You are going. You wanna say something, Monica? Yeah. Yeah. We we we, we recording, so we're gonna need microphones. Okay. Go ahead, Monica. I think I think like. I think you be transformed when you start seeing those on the other side. I think that's a part of your transformation. Uh, like some people they say, like some people they see the flower or they see the light. They, like I have seen the person next to me. I what? think that's part of that transformation that they start venture into the world. Well, well, I, I think I think until we, I think until we are transported. So there's a difference between transform and transport. You can be transformed and still be here. And this is what this is where we're missing the boat. Every time we hear transform, we think we have gone beyond. But no, the transformation, God will transform some of us as this is saying tonight. And we will be left right here. I mean, this, this scripture has been the scripture has been mistaught. I ain't gonna say mistalk, has been taught according to the understanding for that dispensation. So I, I'm not gonna say mistalk, because I don't I don't I don't somebody's gonna come and teach into the scripture beyond me one day. Come on. Are you you're, 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 you want us the Holy Spirit wants us to understand transform means our old to new, meaning the old ways we're adapting the fruits of the spirit. Okay. I'm asking. Okay. A dead person on earth goes in and out. I was dead. Many of, many of you are dead. What 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 says that I'm I don't want to get a study away before I get, get into it, but I'll go ahead and give you this. If I'm dead, that means I, I go to church sometime, I don't go to church sometime. I'm dead. Why? Because I'm still led by how the flesh feels. And as long as I'm controlled and led by the flesh. I am attached to something that is dead already. When I have been transformed yet on this earth, church and things of God are not optional. That says I'm yet I am already living in heaven because that's where I am and that's where I'm always going to be. So anytime there is something godly in my midst, it draws me. If I'm still going in and out of church, I'm not calling you dead. You, you, you're just telling yourself, I'm dead. And so now, Bishop, well, when is God going to transform me? 
When you show him, you're ready to be transformed by stop acting dead when you are when you are alive. See, you're not dead, but you act dead. So as long as you act dead, God allows you to be dead. Y'all see this? Amen. When I stop acting like I have been transformed, like I'm like I'm living in heaven already, God will put me in heaven. Hello, somebody. Amen. So, it, so the only choice I got as for me in my house. I choose to live with God, not some of the time, but hello. Now God said, I'm ready to be transformed. Now, if the horn blows, if the horn blows, get what? I will go from dead to life. But if I'm already living, I will go from life to transforming. Come on, being transformed. Come on. Now, I'm standing right. I said, being transformed. Only test his flesh to do a word thing. I'm going to totally get, I'm just going to get, yeah, as I get totally transformed, I'll be doing all godly things. Worldly things are not an option. Once you accept the transformation of God, you, you now you are in a place, you are in a place where all you receive is the information of God. Transformation. All the time takes me into the information of God. Now, God's information is much higher than the information I've been getting. His understanding is my, can anybody see this? Yes, sir. Transformation takes me into a new information age. Why? When I've been transformed, what, what says, what takes me to the place of transformation is that I can be trusted by God. So I can be trusted with the information that he wants to give me and I won't take it back to the atmosphere. Talk to me, woman, God. Transformation, elevation. Transformation. See, again, religion, religion keeps us focusing on going up. Trans, transformation makes us makes us concerned with being a part of wherever. See, now elevation says, okay, I gotta leave this earth physically in order to be in heaven. And as long as you're thinking like that, the devil has you trapped. Because the Bible says the earth has, the heaven has come to you right here. So now you you missing enjoying heaven because you felt like you're not you have not left this earth. But if you if you are receiving the information of God and you have been transformed, you're in a new state while yet even where you are. Amen. Can everybody see that? Amen. Amen. So so it's just basically saying you're alive in you're alive in the mind. Alive in the mind, dead in the spirit. I talked last night, and this this will help you out. I talked last night. Y'all know I've been talking a lot about how 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 the ground was sanctified with the blood of Jesus. Yes. But do y'all know what he did? Satan invited God back to the earth. See, most people don't even see this. Satan uninvited God. Satan uninvited God because he knew if he could create a disobedient spirit here on earth, God was going to leave. So basically, Satan didn't kick God out, but he uninvited God because who did God get his domain, dominion to in the beginning? Adam. Even before Adam, he gave this, this earth to, 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 to Satan. He kicked Satan out. Sit down to earth for Adam to go through Satan. For man to go through Satan. Y'all got this? Because y'all got to understand why earth was created. There was only one place and it was called heaven. And everybody was included there. Y'all got this? I'm making this very simple for you. Everybody was included there. Satan wanted God to split heaven. He said, I got as many followers as you. People like the way I look, because he was beautiful and he sang good. People like the way I sang and people love I, 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 the, the way I praise. So now, instead of me praising you, they want to praise me. So I tell you, why don't we just split up? And God looked at it. The created want to sit next to the creator? Are you serious? So God kicked them out. He said, I tell you what, I'll give you your, I'll give you your own, watch this, not heaven, but Haven. Don't miss that. Wow. I, I won't give you your own heaven because there's only one heaven, but I will give you a haven. What is the difference between the word haven and heaven? Anybody know? One level. E. e. I'll give you 
give you something that's temporary, but heaven is eternal. You hear this? So I won't give you a heaven, but I'll give you a haven. And then I tell you what, anybody who wants you and want to stay with you, I'll let them stay with you. But I'll show you that everybody that I create is going to come through you to get to me, meaning get to God. Why would I settle for a haven? Hit that yellow button. Why would I, it's all right. Why would I settle for a haven when I could be in heaven? heaven. Amen. Y'all got this? Yes. Okay. Everybody all right? Yes. Now, we're going we're gonna to go quickly through this. To this, to this, to our, to our, what our skin gonna look like. Somebody say irrelevant. irrelevant. Hello. Watch what it says. And 30, 35 says, but someone, someone may ask, how will the dead be raised? Okay. How will the dead be raised? Jesus was the promised land. I taught, I learned this last night from a brother. And you got to understand something. When he, when he poked a hole in Jesus, what did he do? Sanctified the ground. He sanctified the ground, but he also opened up the heavens. You see it now? See, the, he, let, he let what was living out. He, he'd have been all right if he would if he would have never if he would have never poked them in and let see the, the flesh was dead but the spirit inside is what been driving Jesus all the time and Jesus was trying to figure out figure out a way for it to come out. So Satan, remember this. This is key, very key. We might not even get to our verses. I'm just gonna pick some out. This is very key. Remember when Jesus said, "You're not taking my life." I'm giving my life up. He wasn't talking to the to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Who was he talking to? He was talking to Satan. He said, you're not taking my life. I'm giving my life up because this is what God called me to do. Watch now. So, because the trickster had to be tricked. The trickster, who was the trickster? Satan. The deceiver had to be deceived. Because he had created an atmosphere where God did not want to be here. When he inputted sin in Adam and Eve, he had to be tricked. Because when sin came, it closed up the heavens. How do I know it closed up the heavens? Because everybody went down to Hades. A holding place. Y'all hear this? So now, they had to trick Satan into opening up the heavens. So Satan wanted to be seen by all his demonic followers, even the Pharisees, with their greed, were following Satan. Watch this. What happens here? What happens here? So now, God closed up the heavens. When sin came, he literally... Close up the heavens. So the heavens was closed at the time of Adam and Eve. And you had you had to be yeah you had to have a special invitation like Enoch, Elijah, and one more one more went to heaven that that we, we most people don't even see when. Who else went to heaven? I told y'all the other day Moses. Moses had to go because he already had access to it because he was going up and down the mountain. And you know Moses was not in the holding tank. Why? On the Mount of Transfiguration, Elijah and Moses was there. Right, right. So he couldn't have been in the holding place. Okay? Watch this. So now, Mo when, when Jesus was on the cross, God, this was so, this is so, man, God is so wise. When Jesus was on the cross, he, instead of Satan tempting Jesus, Jesus tempted Satan. When he said, you're not taking my life, I'm giving it up because that's what daddy told me to do. So now, why, now, remember I asked y'all a question? Why would you poke a dead man? Why would you put a spirit in a dead man? Huh? Because thousands and thousands of years from now, if the blood had not did what it had done, Satan was going to take credit for killing Jesus. Y'all see this? Wow. He wanted the, 
Even though Jesus was dead, and only the people that were around the cross knew he was dead, but Satan was going to take credit for killing Jesus. That's why he poked the dead man in his side. So thousands of years from now, he can say, yeah, I'm the one who killed your Messiah, the one you thought came to save you. Mm. Wow. But when he did that, see, he got to see when he did that, what he did. Who came from heaven? God. Jesus came from heaven. So when he poked Jesus in the side, everything that was in heaven came pouring out of him, and he opened up the heavens. Y'all see it? So the deceiver got deceived. And when he did that, he invited God back to the earth. So Jesus came and paved the way, but God said, I still, I, I'm still, I still ain't coming until I get an invitation. <laughs> ain't that it? Y'all see that? Can you see it? So when he poked, so that's the only reason, because ever since I asked y'all that question, Lord, why in the world would you poke a dead man in the side? He said, I had to get Satan to invite me back to the dominion I gave him. Outsmarted him. Hey, see, I'm telling you, flesh and blood don't give you that. Can y'all see that? Amen. Is it plain? Yes. And when he opened, so everything on the outside, watch this. According to everything on the outside, Jesus, they said Jesus was what? Dead. The flesh was dead. And he should have left him as he was, but when he pierced the side, what was alive came pulled, gushing out. And then not only, and, and, and from that day forward, it is going to hit tonight. He became the life giver. He gave life. All right? Yes. So now, now that you know that, you don't care what your pigmentation is going to look like in your heavenly body. You got it? Yes. Was it, was it shortly after, um, remember the man that helped kill him? Shortly, was it, remember they, after, after the little, they killed him, right? And afterwards, the man was saying, they were sorry, and they mean to, was that after he got poked on the side? You mean Judas? No. Who killed who? The man that helped put him on the cross. Remember, after he was dead. Oh, well, you gotta understand, when he, when the man who poked him, he instantly was delivered when the blood hit him. That's what I'm yeah, instantly when the blood hit him, it was because that would show he needed that to show you, even though you harm me, right, right. I will still deliver you. Y'all see that? Yes. Even though you harm me, I will still deliver you. Huh? Same one the blood hit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He said it. He said it. Um, Dima said it. And, and Judas said it. All three, it was said by Judas, it was said by Demas. Demas was the man on the cross. Demas and Justice was hanging on the cross. Y'all got it? Yeah. Dumas, Dumas, not even Dumas. Dumas and Justice was hanging on the cross. Dumas said it. The God that poked him in the side said it. And Judas said it. Amen? Yeah. All right, now watch. So we're gonna, we're gonna read through this, it says, but someone asked, how will the dead be raised? What kind of bodies will they have? What a foolish question. When you put a seed in the ground, it doesn't grow into a plant unless it dies first. Died, gave life. Died, gave life. Died, gave life. You guys want to give life, but you don't want to die. See, because death is a place. See, I, I am suffering to... I am suffering to... There it is. I am suffering to death. So while I'm still on earth, I will now come out and give life. Right. Suffering is me being planted. When I, when I die, I'm covered up. When you plant something, you plant it. And then when it's in the ground, what you do? You cover it up. And then it grows. So y'all don't want the cover up part. Y'all want to die and still be seen. Y'all want to die and still be propped up like Jesus. There was only one that died. See, but y'all don't even understand. Jesus, because he had been to heaven, he was already covered up. Why? Because he had been beyond the earth anyway, so 
he was always covered up. So when he died, even though he was raised up according to us, he was still below where he came from. All right? Yes. Y'all got to forgive me. I was with them scholars last night. They got me out there. <laughs> and it says, and what you put in the ground is not the plant that will grow. So Jesus said, it wasn't Jesus that was coming back. It was not the kernel that you put in the ground is not coming back, but kernels like the kernel that you put in the ground is coming back. Then God gives the new body what he wants it to have. A different plant grows from each kind of seed. Okay? Similarly, there are different kinds of flesh, one kind for human, another kind for animals, another kind for birds, and, a, and another for fish. See, this is where we get messed up in dealing with our when we enter the spirit realm, you are so bound to what you see that you can't even enjoy your loved ones because you want to see them as well as communicate with them. Y'all hear this? So, so I want to know, so now if I'm in the heavenly realm, what do my grandmama look like? What do, if you had a chance to see her and not talk to her, or talk to her, and not see her, which one would you rather do? Huh? Talk to her. If I had a chance, brother, to see my, if God said you got one thing, you need to see your wife or talk to your wife. I'd go crazy looking at her and not knowing what, not being able to communicate with her. Y'all got it? Yes. Because you can't see them. Why? Because you're not totally spiritual yet. You're, you, you, are, you are still man and spirit. You were first, but started out man and earth. You couldn't even communicate with them. But now you are person and spirit. Started out person and earth. Now you are person and spirit. Got it? So now, God said, what, what would you rather have? A place of seeing them? Are communicating with them. Which, which would you rather do? Communicate. Okay. And God knows this because He's God. Let me put my glasses back on and go up here so I can see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now watch this. You're going to leave here a new creature tonight. I, I guarantee you. It says there are bodies in the heavenly heaven, there are bodies in the heavens and bodies on the earth. The bodies on the earth, we're concerned about what we see here. When we get there, then we'll be concerned. How many people, when your baby coming out? Yeah, you would hope for a beautiful baby. But if the baby is not the most beautiful thing in the world, <laughs> and the baby come out not looking, the baby come out looking like me, tore up from the floor. Mm. All right. Are you gonna be mad? Huh? You gonna say, man, man, you ain't gonna never mix baby up with you, I promise you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the bottom line is, you're not concerned about how the baby looks when it comes out. What you what do you think you're really concerned about? Huh? And you ain't even concerned about the ten toes and five and, and ten fingers. You're concerned that it's a lie. That's what you're concerned about. So stop worrying about what's going to look like when you get to heaven. Just know that you're going to be living. Mm, all right. Everybody see that? Yeah. Keep the main thing the main thing. I'm just happy. I can literally tell you. I had, a, I had a daughter that had ten fingers, ten toes, smiled and breathed and cried for one day. And then the next day she was gone. So you really think I was concerned about how she looked? I wish she would have been alive with me here. But she's alive because she ain't had, she ain't had a chance to do wrong. Praise the Lord. But you understand what I'm saying? So what you're really concerned about is not how the baby's going to look. So stop worrying about what you're going to look like when you get to heaven. Just walk in the assurance that you're going to be alive Amen. after you leave here. Yes. 
We get so Amen. caught up, we still grounded to this earth, worried about who look the best, who's going to be the best, and what I'm going to look like. Mm. What difference does it make if you don't even, what difference does it make what you're going to look like if you ain't there? You better get concerned about being where your new birthday suit is. I know that's right. Hello. And whatever it looks like, glory be to God. Hello, somebody. Yes, God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now, our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. Jesus Christ. They will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness. They are buried in what? Weakness. But they are raised in strength. I am buried in weakness. Talk to the woman of God. I just want to um, get some clarity um, for you to expound on. Um, when Christ um, was in his immortal body, yeah. his immortal body, and it was broken, and they put him in the tomb, and he was resurrected in his mortal body. Um, because upon the ascension, when the ascension happened, it did not say he was transformed then into another body. He was already walking in his mortal body after when he was resurrected. It did not say when the um, apostles saw him, when the disciples saw him, he transformed into another body, into another type of body. He was already walking in his mortal body, his immortal body. Is it a mortal or a mortal? Immortal. immortal body but he prior no, to his immortal, death yeah. was the mortal, mortal body yeah. so what you're just reading about was the brokenness and everything yeah. and, and how we died and then um but like you're saying is even right now we can still walk in morta immortality that's, that's the whole that's the when i accept the transformation yes yeah. when i accept the you want to say something else? you want to say something else? yes it's that but that's on earth Right, you're speaking of on earth, Pastor, right? But even, watch this, I'm, I'm going to help you out with that. I'm not finished. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Bishop. No, 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 finish, because I, I know where you're going. See, I can see where you're going, so let, go let them see where you're going. Come right, on. but Pastor, you're talking about on earth, right? Yeah. But Bishop is teaching us, with all due respect, he's talking about our new bodies in heaven, because he's teaching us in 1 Corinthians 38, that it said that God gives a beautiful new body, just the kind he wants us to have, a different kind. And then Bishop taught us in 52 that it will happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when we pass over to the heavens. So on earth, you're right. It, it do speaks us of having our same physical. Can, can right? I say something? No, no. I'm asking. Can, can, can I say something? No, 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 no. Um, I'm at, okay. Minister, you don't look like you looked a year ago. No. Why? You got on, you got on a new body. You you right now you're yeah. wearing an immortal body right now you you because you always carry a glow you always carry joy immortality is never depressed immortality is never worried immortality is never upset immortality carries a glow it carries joy I know you look different you you might say look in the mirror and think you look the same but I promise you you don't look the same. Remember when Jesus was walking with the two men and they say, he said, what's going on? And they say, you don't know what, where you been? You don't know what's going on? That was Jesus they were talking to. They didn't recognize him until he broke the bread. They said, oh my God, that's him. I'm confused now. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Pastor Thompson, you're saying, right, that, okay. Let me see you. Okay. Sit right here. Okay, Jesus, you were saying that when Jesus resurrected, he resurrected. Before, before the resurrection. Think yes, about how his body was and the form it was in before the resurrection. Meaning his regular right. body and then the being, be in, not and there. Being, 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 uh -huh. everything. And right. it was in a what type of state? It was in a mortal Broken. state. Mortal right. state. You know what mortal means? Oh, you you have a new home Human. and new, yeah. So now. What Bishop is trying to teach us is to how to walk in an immortal state, yet being here in earth in this body. But we're going to be literally transformed as the body, as the spirit we take on, and the body we take on, yeah, the spiritual, ancestral body, the celestial body. You can take you, it on now. You take it on now. 
See, we're looking at a stripping away of the flesh. We still got our eyes on the flesh. flesh. We still, we have to know we can walk in a sense of immortality right what? now. And, what and this is the thing that we can take, we're going to take. That's and good. when he was walking good. with the two men, he was. And they didn't even recognize They didn't recognize, they didn't recognize it. People still don't recognize you. You can walk in your immortal body and people don't recognize who you are right now. Right now, you can walk in some place you did. I don't know who you are, man. That's who right. is Marilyn? Is? Who that is, that, that is not the Marilyn I know. That's not the Marilyn. Yes, it's that. It's that you changed. Yeah, you changed. Yes, you do you understand what we're saying? I understand. Yeah. I understand. Now, and I now watch this. Another time. Remember when he said, hey, have you caught any fish? They say, they knew it was him, but they dared not ask him who he was. <laughs> and I just and even before the, before the transformation took place, when Mary came out and she said, um, uh, he said, she saw Jesus and knew not that it was him. Yeah. And then he told her, "Do not touch me. I have not yet gone to my Father." Y'all hear this? Yes. Huh? Yes. So. Confirmation, 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 even at that point, Jesus needed it before he could even witness. Y'all hear this? He had to go to God and get, get his well done before he could even try and teach anymore. He couldn't even tell them nothing. He said, go tell them. She, he could have told them, tell them the Holy Spirit going to be on them and, and, and so on and so But he couldn't do none of that. He said, tell them to go to Galilee and wait on me. Now, Bishop, where, where, when does it happen what you're reading? When does that happen? When, what, this is good. I, I'm glad I taught them. I was one of the Lord. I was going to teach, God, I was going to teach them something else, but God took me here tonight. When does it happen? Let's, let's, let's dive into it a little more, a little more okay? Can Go I, ahead, woman. Can I just say one more thing, Bishop? Um, even when we're walking in the immortal state on here on earth, um, there's something that still have to bear witness of who there we are. So people, remember down in Thomas? And um, God, Jesus had to show his wounds. Yeah, right. Yes, he had to show his wounds. Because yet and still, even though he was walking in this, uh, the celestial state in the state of immortality, People still have to know, like, you're not beyond this place, yeah. if I'm making any sense, Bishop. Yeah. Like, they still have to be able to recognize, something has to be relatable for them to draw of Amen. you, Amen. to draw them. Okay. That they don't lose, the, they don't lose themselves, or even say, I can't, I don't know, I ain't listening, I ain't not, you know. But you have to still carry a piece of, um, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to word a Bishop. Of the how how he was broken and the scars and like because the marks were still in his hands and his feet. Oh yeah, he to be recognized. Remember, David Thomas didn't recognize who he was. So. Yeah, until he showed his hand and his feet. But he was still yet in his state of immortality. So when Thomas saw that, he believed. Did he believe? Because he was like, I don't believe that you. Hold what on, that can't be. That so can't be. What that can't the, be our teacher. Now, what you're trying to say? What was Jesus witness that he was Jesus? His nail prints. The scars. The, the mar, the scar. The scars. scars. The scars. See y'all, y'all try to see y'all try to hide y'all scars. That means you have not been transformed because you're still concerned about how this looks. You have not, you have, you don't have on your new body because when I got on my new body, I don't care how you see my old body. But the way we show our scars, is it? Now you're coming. Okay, now you're we, coming. Well, we show our scars by going back to our old behavior. No. Oh. We show no 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 my scars is my truthful testimony. Exactly. And that's your truth. My not not just a testimony, because most people testimony, they only testify about where God got them now. But a truth. That's why I can say in spirit and in truth. And God Amen. will get the glory. You have to remember the scars that you bear, God must get the glory from those scars. Amen. Not you get the glory or you get the attention or the pity party, but God must get the glory from the scars that you bear. You understand? Amen. Wow, this is deep. Come on, man. Thank y'all. Got it? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get clear. Got it? Yes, sir. Got it? I, I told you I'm going to take my time tonight because this is very, very imperative for saints. You want to say something about that? No, no. I just want to. Uh, I just want to read the definition of uh, mortal. Okay. Uh, read. 
Greek of a living human being, often in contrast to a divine being subject to death. Yes. Subject to death. And immortality, the ability to live forever, eternal life. Amen. Our bodies are buried, verse 43, our bodies are buried in brokenness. Our body has scars. They are buried in weakness. Our scars show that we were not always strong. Stop making people feel like they cannot get where you are. Amen. Right, amen. They are buried as natural human bodies, but they are raised as spiritual bodies. So now I don't care what the human body look like no more. I don't care what you say about it. I don't care how you feel about it. Because as long as once I step outside of my human body, feelings no longer matter. Right. Amen. Amen. Wow. But just as there are natural bodies, don't get it twisted. There are also spiritual bodies. So in other words, I came here. I came here a place, a place. I came here earth and person. I, I to leave here. I got it into another place, person and spirit. I came here earth. And person. Man was created from the dust. No, he was formed from the dust. But when I leave here, I got to go back to where I was created and not formed. Uh -huh. Right. Jesus Christ. Y'all hear this? Yes. When I came here, I came here and I was a part of what I was formed in. But when I leave here, I got to leave here totally in what I was created in. Spirit. Jesus Christ. Talk to them. And this is the in-depthness of walking in the spirit. Amen. This is the essence of, because we hear about being spiritual. We hear about um, professing to be spiritual or even um, acting or behaving as we're spiritual. This is the very essence of still being in this realm and being in and having an immortal in a spirit in, a, in a, an immortal body. See, this is the embodiment of being spiritual because we're not taught on because it's so hard to say we're spiritual and we're still living in this flesh. Amen. So the word that Bishop is teaching us tonight is how to um, take it on in its totality. And I'm going to show you. The, the spirit, see, the spirit man don't need the law. The flesh needs the law. The earth needs the law. The spirit man, see, the, the law regulates seasons. Hello? The spirit man says, I, I believe what I hear from my creator. Period. He don't need no explanation. That's right. That's right. That's it. Amen. Show you something. Now, it goes up and it says, for 45, the scripture tells us, the first Adam became a living person, but the last Adam, that is Christ, is a living person. Life giving spirit. Somebody go to um um somebody go to Romans five and five and seventeen. That's what it is. Somebody go to Romans five and seventeen for me. Now, how do we believe we, we would attach ourselves totally to at the first Adam, but we'll struggle becoming the second Adam? The Adam that leaves that gonna lead me to death. I will fall in love with him and hold on to him. And, 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 and you know what? Even when this start crumbling, I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to make it up to, 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 so I can stay connected to the first Adam. But here comes the second Adam. Say, this Adam don't mean nothing. Forget about it. But I, I can't forget about it. I can't forget about this. I can't forget about it. But what? Read. Somebody read. The sin of this one man, Adam, caused dead to be king. Okay, the sin of this one man, Adam, caused what? Death to be king over all. Death for everybody. If you don't leave the natural and enter the spiritual, you're going to die, and when you die, you got to go to hell, and the, and the weight and the infirmities got to be burned off in hell's fire so the spirit can come out. If you die with the weight of this flesh, if you die, what is the weight of this flesh? If you die loving this flesh, it's got to be burned off you. 
He said the second, that's the second baptism. The first baptism is a baptism, I say it all the time, of water, baptism of what? Peace. He said, but that second baptism, now you could have took it. I, I gave, I, I, I cleansed you, and there was nothing but peace. When you came up out of the water, you was cleansed, but you chose not to stay clean. You chose to put back on the infirmities of this world. And if you mess around and doubt the infirmities on this world, they, they, you got to go through the second baptism. The baptism of what? Fire and spirit. Hello. Fire so your spirit can rise. I'm telling you, except, except, <laughs> this morning I talked I talk this this morning. I say, except the baptism of peace. Sister Denise said, when you baptize them again. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you don't, when you come out, if you know you put the infirmities back in, dive back in that water. I don't care if every time we go, you got to get in it. Hopefully you'll leave that night because you ain't got to have a chance to put no infirmities back on. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. If Auntie had left as soon as she came out that water, oh my God, she was guaranteed. Amen. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. Is the Lord now? Yeah, now, so watch this. So now, look, read that again. This the Romans five and seventeen. This one man, the, Adam. The sins of this one man, Adam, caused the death to be king. Caused the death to be king over all. Over all, and continue. But all who would take God's gift of forgiveness. But all who would take God's gift of forgiveness. And a puzzle. And a quarter. Are kings of life. A king of love. Because of this one man, Jesus Christ. Hello. Now, that wasn't, that wasn't New Living, was it? Parallel. Okay. It was that New Living? Yes, sir. Okay. A New Living translation? It says the Parallel New Testament, King James Version. Okay. Give me a New Living. I, 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 I want to hear something that I read in New Living. That's yes, sir. That, but it says the same thing. Yes, sir. In other words, what it's saying is you have accepted what Adam gave, but you won't accept what Jesus came to give. Read one more time. For the sin of this one man, Adam, yeah. caused death to rule over many. To rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace. But even greater than Adam, that was the word I was looking for. But even greater is what we won't accept. That's what I read earlier today. I didn't hear that word greater. But even greater is what we won't accept. We won't, why we won't accept the greater? It takes us into the unknown. We are man that's comfortable in the known. Because in the known, I can depend on my knowledge and I don't need wisdom. Jesus Christ. I need wisdom to step into the unknown. But knowledge can, with knowledge, I can stay right where I'm at and feel comfortable. Read one with God. For even, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. His gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death. Through this one man, Jesus Christ. All I got to do is believe in Jesus, and all any sin that comes my way is only an appearance for a greater purpose for God. All I got to do is believe in Jesus Christ. Any sin that's in my life is there for appearance purposes, just like for Jesus Christ. Did Jesus Christ sin? It was, but but he was a part of sin for what? Appearance purposes, what? For a greater cause. People miss that. All things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. All things. Was a what was Jesus' appearance of sin? Huh? What was Jesus' appearance of sin? What was Jesus' appearance of sin? The way he died. To, 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 he died a sinner's death. Anybody who was crucified, that was the worst, that was the worst death. That was like me going to the electric chair now. People walking by, he must have did something real bad to die like that. So there was an appearance, but he never sinned, but there was what? An appearance. Why? He couldn't sin because he was in love with God. But God said, I'm going to take you down this sinful path for a greater purpose. So once I'm in love with God, see that's why you got, that's why it's imperative that you know for sure, for sure, that you love God. Now you can be content in all things. See, when we when, when you're on milk, 
You're content in, in, in I messed up. But when you are on me, you say, you know what, Lord? What you doing? But whatever it is, I'm glad you're using me. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. I don't say why you're doing it. I might ask him to explain, and if he chooses to explain, he does. But if he don't, I don't stop waiting on him to explain. If he don't explain, I keep on doing what he I, do, I look for the next thing he wants me to do. All things work together for the good of those that love the law. Righteous behavior, sinful behavior, good behavior, bad behavior. Guess what? It was prescriptive in how you handle it says who you belong to. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all got this? Yes, sir. Y'all know I'm y'all know I'm just a crook, crook from the crook from the crevice. But I can't run from the blessings that God has for me. Can't run from. Them. I'm a crook from the crevice. I'm running, doing what I do. Pastor, running, doing what I do. Bishop, running, doing what I do. State bishop, running, doing what I do. What I'm saying to you is. I'm not telling you to run the foolishness, but you don't run from what God allows in your life. You accept it and keep coming to church. Yes, yes. yes. Y'all get stuck in, 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 in the purpose of God, and then y'all want to leave the church. Y'all leaving us? Okay, go to work, baby. Bring the tithes back now. I'm with that. Go where you are. Don't you don't get stuck out there. I come back. You ain't going to work. <laughs> But y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. The purpose of God, don't you know the more you do for God and the more you go through for God, the more God got for you? Huh? There's nothing finished. It looked like it was all over, Jesus. Since you're running out, I'm going to stay over for God. It looked like... Are we sharing pictures in front of you? No. Did somebody say so? What did he say? <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? You can't run from your blessings. The more you go through for God, and what I'm saying is, what indicates that I'm going through for God? Somebody tell me what indicates that I'm going through for God. Trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations gonna happen. Huh? When, I when I don't complain. When I'm going through it and I still love God. Lose my mom. Still love God. In a bad situation, I don't want to be in. Still love God. And, and God said, y'all y'all sit here don't even understand. Your proof of love. Y'all don't even, what is it? Y'all don't, y'all can debate this all over the country. I don't care. But don't, tell me your, the simplest way to prove that you love God. The simplest, it ain't complicated. The simplest way to prove you love God, find a church home and go every time the door right, open. That's right. If you don't, if you go when things are going good, you're happy with God. If you go when, if you don't go when things are going bad, you're mad at God, and you cannot be mad at God and in love with Him. Because when you're mad, you ain't gonna serve Him. And in order to serve, in order to love God, we have to become angelic. And angels don't, 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 do not do what God tells them to do. Angels always, always, yeah. always. I don't care where they gotta go. They can go. They can be out there in the middle of a battle, and, and, and he said, "Go in that battle, and you just stand there and take every blow that's supposed to hit Bishop Robinson. You stand right there and you take every blow, angel. The angel don't say why." The angel don't say he put himself in that situation. That's what y'all say, because y'all are not angelic yet. Let me show you something. Everybody, everybody see this? Yes, sir. Talk to the woman, God. So, Bishop, if, if, if God made us in his image, which he did say that, I made God in his image. And he did, he said, we are little gods, and I'm glad you teach on that. We are little gods, little Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he named us higher than the angels, and he said even the angels we will judge. No, 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 no. We are a little bit lower than the angels. Even if we're lower, God. But the, the yeah, but the angels are jealous because even though we're lower, he gives us more love. Uh -huh. Oh, we're a little bit lower than Satan. Come here. 
Come on, man, I gotta talk to me. That'll be the little, the little cheap part. I mean, the, the, the little cheap part. Yes, you don't have to go. Like I got ready to Now, now, I created you. Okay. Okay. In my image, okay. you look just like me. Huh? God is perfect, and everything He made is what. Perfect. But see, our perfection goes through obedience. Do we accept the perfection of God? What kind of will do we have to accept in order to step into the perfection of God? Permissive. I per Come here, man, God. Now, wait a minute. Push up, push up. Now, are you going to fight him back or go, go to your perfection? See? See? Get it back. Check what I'm saying now. Are you going to fight him back or come to your creator? See what we don't understand? We don't fight back because you got to understand. You just took the perfection of God. He going to deal with you. Y'all got this? God gonna protect what he accepts that they look like him. He gonna ignore what says I want to be. Come on. He gonna ignore what says stand up there. Just right there. He gonna ignore what says I want to be bigger than God. When I don't look to God and I handle it myself, now I am. I am technically saying. I can handle this because I'm bigger than you, God. He gonna ignore and leave you to yourself because you now think you are bigger than me. Wow. Because you create. Because how are you gonna be bigger than your creator? If I created you in my image, don't you know I'm gonna protect my reputation? Mm. Y'all got this? Huh? So now, when he pushes you. Now push it again. Now you turn around and say, Pop, did you see that? Pop, did you see that? And he's gonna say, I got this. I got this. Touch not my anointing. What did I tell you? Touch not my anointing? To do my prophet no harm? Now y'all got this? Okay. See, never put yourself in a place of being bigger than God because he will ignore you and show you that you're not. Okay. Mm, okay. Amen. Amen. You got a really good example. Yeah, now, now, so now we understand that God is bigger than all. Okay. Jesus understood that. That's why he always surrendered to God, not just submitted. Watch what he says. He says, earthly people are like earthly men, and heavenly people are like heavenly, the heavenly man. Just as we are like earthly men, now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. Now, it's coming. Here it comes. When I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, this is our physical body, that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. Earth is a haven, not a heaven. You can't live here, you can't live in a haven forever. Hello, somebody. You can live in the hell of the haven forever, but you can't live in the haven forever. Hello, somebody. Now, um, let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. Will happen in a, in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. Those who have died will be raised to live forever. So now, if I'm on this earth, see, we still, we still forget about dead people that are gone. He's 
talking about the people that are in the midst of the fight right now. Those who have accepted giving up this life yes, yes. will live forever. Those who have not accepted giving up this life will have chose not to live forever because what? They thought they were bigger than God. 